Early in 2016, the boards responsible for accepted international and U.S. accounting standards published new rules governing how public companies will account for leases. These rules will take effect the 1st of January 2019 and provide increased visibility by moving leases out of the footnotes and onto the balance sheets and income statements. And while fleet vehicles won't typically have material impact, the impact of other asset classes, such as leases for real estate, equipment, and aircraft will be more easily seen. To begin, let's first understand what a lease is. A lease exists when a right to use a specific asset is conveyed for consideration. In other words, let's assume for a second that we have an agreement. A lease exists within our agreement if you have the right to control the use of a specific asset, such as a vehicle with a make, model, and VIN number, for a period of time and must pay for that use. You are in control when you can direct the asset's use and benefit from its use in terms of economics and practical, practical uh, measures, and if I, as a lessor, can't substitute another asset at my discretion. Concepts such as ownership of residual risk are no longer relevant in understanding what goes on or off the balance sheet. Conveyance of the right to use a specific asset is the key consideration. As a result, public companies will now include operating leases, capital leases, and finance leases on their balance sheets. There are a few exclusions, which include leases that are 12 months or less and assets that are less than $5,000. The value that will be reported will be the present value of the reasonably certain lease payments for the right to use assets. In other words, if you have a 36-month closed-end lease, the net present value for the 36 months will show up as an asset and also will show up as a liability. The discount rate will either be the interest rate within the lease or if that can't be readily determined, a corporate incremental borrowing rate. Services can be excluded if they can be readily separated from the lease payments. As you might imagine, there's a worldwide accounting community that's poring over these rule changes and will be determining how the rules will apply. And while the intention was to create one set of accounting rules, after decades of study and drafts, we still have two accounting worlds. That being said, it's important to remember that the accounting rules haven't changed the benefits that companies receive from leasing operational flexibility, access to low-cost capital, outsourcing of administrative burdens, improved cash flows and tax benefits all still exist to provide economic and practical benefits to companies. I would encourage you to speak with your uh, fleet leasing advisors if you have questions and we at Wheels and ALD stand ready to assist all of our clients around the world. Thank you.